We've talked a good deal about sequences and subsequences. Certainly, we've seen that not every sequence behaves nicely. Converging is a pretty nice behavior, and the sequence of natural numbers, for example, is divergent. Although not every sequence behaves nicely, every sequence has subsequences, and so we may be interested in the question, does every sequence have a nice subsequence? The answer to this, of course, depends on what we mean by nice. If by nice we mean a convergent subsequence, then again the answer is no. Not every sequence has convergent subsequences. The sequence of natural numbers, for example, diverges to infinity, and I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson where we saw that if a sequence diverges to infinity, then so do all of its subsequences. Although the sequence of natural numbers isn't convergent, and neither are any of its subsequences, they are all monotone, so it does have monotone subsequences. And in fact, Every sequence has a monotone subsequence, and that's what we'll be proving today. And we're going to use this result later to help us prove a very cool result called the Balzano-Weierstrass theorem. And this theorem will actually tell us about a class of sequences that do all have convergent subsequences. But we'll get to that later. Enough dilly-dallying. Let's go ahead and get into the proof of this theorem. Let's quickly look at the reasoning the proof will use. Here are two kind of random examples of graphs of sequences. Notice in the sequence on the left, there's something kind of interesting going on. It looks like we have a term here that's greater than or equal to all of the terms that come after it. And then there's another term that's greater than or equal to all of the terms that come after it. And another one, and another one and maybe another one. It doesn't look like this sequence has those. Like this term, for example, it's greater than some of the nearby terms, but just a little bit later, there's a bigger term. So this sequence has what we might call peaks. If we connect the points of the sequence, you can see the highlighted terms kind of look like peaks. The idea of the proof is that every sequence falls in one of two categories. It either has infinitely many peaks, which are terms of the sequence greater than or equal to all of the terms after it, or it has finitely many peaks. Maybe that means it doesn't have any at all, or maybe it just has a few, but it only has a finite number. Then the really slick idea is that if a sequence has infinitely many peaks, we can create a decreasing subsequence by taking all of those peaks. By definition of a peak, each one has to be greater than or equal to all of the peaks that come after it. So then we would have a decreasing subsequence, and remember we're looking for monotone subsequences, so we would be done. On the other hand, if a sequence has finitely many peaks, then we could identify the final peak in the sequence and then consider the first term after that. Maybe that's this term here. This could be the first term after the last peak. Since it's after the last peak, it itself is not a peak. And so there must be some term that comes after it that is greater, like this one. But this is also past the last peak, so it can't be a peak, so there needs to be a term after it that is greater, like this one, and then like this one, and so on. And we would get ourselves an increasing subsequence, and again, that's a monotone subsequence. Now, with the concept of these peaks, which will help us in our proof introduced, as well as the general outline of how it will go, I encourage you to try writing the proof yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. Hopefully you've given it a try, or at least a couple of minutes of thought. I'm going to go ahead and delete these, and let's get into the actual proof. We'll say let an be our arbitrary sequence, and now we want to define this concept of a peak that's going to be so useful to us. So we'll say call a term an a peak if an is greater than or equal to all of the terms that come after it. So it's greater than or equal to am for every m greater than n. That's what makes a term a peak. 
And remember, this means if a term is not a peak, then it's less than some term that comes after it. So any term an that isn't a peak, we know there's some greater term that comes after it. Now, a sequence could either have infinitely many of these peaks or it could have finitely many. So we proceed by cases. First, suppose our sequence has infinitely many peaks. Then we can just say, let ank be the kth peak. By definition of a peak, an1, the first peak, has to be greater than or equal to an2, the second peak, which has to be greater than or equal to the third peak, which has to be greater than or equal to the fourth peak, and so on. Again, that's by definition of peak. A peak is greater than or equal to all of the terms that come after it. So each peak is greater than or equal to all of the peaks that come after it. And so by simply taking the infinite sequence of these peaks in order, we have a decreasing subsequence. And remember, there are infinitely many peaks. So this sequence of peaks, it's a true infinite subsequence. And by definition of a peak, it's going to have to be decreasing. And so we've got our monotone subsequence. Now for the second case, what if our sequence only has finitely many peaks? Then there has to be some last peak. Let's call that a big N. That's the last peak in the sequence. If a big N is the last peak, then certainly the very next term in the sequence, a N plus one is not a peak. And let's call a big N plus one the first term of our subsequence. So we'll call it a N one. A n one, the first term of the sequence after the last peak, obviously can't be a peak. By definition, since a n one isn't a peak, there has to be some number, say n two, that's greater than n one, so that a n two is greater than a n one. This just means that since a n one isn't a peak, by definition, there's some term of the sequence that comes after it that is greater. But of course, since a n two comes after a n one, a n two can't be a peak either because it comes after the last peak. And so by definition, that means there exists some number n three greater than n two so that a n three is greater than a n two. And continuing in this way, we can construct an infinite increasing subsequence. Since the subsequence starts after the last peak, every term of the subsequence will have some bigger term that must come after it. And so we're guaranteed to have an increasing subsequence. Again, a n three wouldn't be a peak, and so there would be a bigger term in the sequence, a n four, coming after it. Then there'd have to be a bigger term after that, a n five, since a n four isn't a peak either, and so on. So in either case, whether our sequence has infinitely many peaks or finitely many peaks, we can find a monotone subsequence. Thus, every sequence has a monotone subsequence. Now for next time, I want you to think about what type of sequence will always have a convergent subsequence. I'll see you next time. Killing our world.